Every once in a while, I hear of something that I just got to read about, and it totally gets me lost down a rabbit hole. I want to talk about one of those things tonight, but first, let's talk about low and slow. It's how we barbecue here in the South. It's how you best smoke stuff if you're going to put meat on the table. It's how... Kettle and fire does their bone broth. Low and slow. Simmered for 20 hours plus. Bones with organic veggies and herbs. Straight to you. Collagen protein. Amino acids. Get your work recovery on. Get your workout recovery on. Get your injury recovery on. Help you with your intermittent fasting. It's keto friendly. It's paleo friendly, and it is goddamn delicious. How do you like them apples or broths, as it were? Go over to kettleandfire.com, fill up your box, use code BetterHumanhood at checkout, ten percent off your order. It's kettleandfire.com. Use code BetterHumanhood at checkout for ten percent off your order. And now, let's talk about. The Griffiths Tribe. Welcome to Better Humanhood, where we build a better world by building better people. We have to live on the planet and we have to live with other people. We have conversations about making that a wonderful proposition. Welcome and welcome back to Better Humanhood. Hope you are having an awesome day, an awesome week, an awesome life. Hey, an awesome hour, an awesome minute. Right this very second, I hope you are awesome. We're going down a rabbit hole tonight. I say tonight, of course, the show releases at 6 a.m., but it is a little after midnight here as I'm recording this. House is quiet. That's why I recorded this hour. You know, I forget where I heard about Agrippa's Trilemma, but thinking back and rolling back through the podcast feed, probably Naval Ravikant on Joe Rogan's podcast. He's a smart dude. He talks about things that are way over my head. I mean, Rogan's pretty smart, but I'm talking about Naval Ravikant. He just, he's astounding, we'll put it that way. And I heard about it, I had to look up a Griffith's Trilemma and tried to parse it out for myself, and I'm going to try to parse it out for you, and I'm probably going to sound like an idiot doing it. But it reminded me, and then when I had to go learn about Pascal's Triangle, if you're not familiar with that, I will have a link in the show notes to a blog post I did on that a few years ago. It's a triangle where you use consecutive integers down the sides and on the diagonals and then you make fractals by blocking out the odd numbers and there are all kinds of formulas and things that break off from it. For some reason, Agrippa's trilemma is more frequently known as the Munchausen trilemma, even though Agrippa lived about 1,700 years before Hieronymus, Carl Friedrich von Munchausen. Also, Agrippa is a lot easier to say. So there. So I'm going to call it Agrippa's Trilemma. It's how I first heard it. It's easier to say. And I am a stubborn little shit. Three arguments are presented against the provability of any philosophical truth, and specifically the Trilemma is the decision which one to use. In science, we use the principle of falsifiability in our search to prove or more accurately accurately support hypotheses using the scientific method. Basically, in science, if there's no statement that would negate a hypothesis, it's not a valid hypothesis. Wikipedia offers an example claim that all swans are white and have always been white is falsifiable since it is contradicted by this basic statement. In 1697, during the Dutch explorer Willem de Vlaming's expedition, there were black swans on the shore of the Swan River in Australia, which in this case is a true observation. Now, a statement doesn't have to be proven false to be falsifiable. You just have to be able to test it. All fish live in Primarily in water is falsifiable, but it isn't false. There are a couple of fish that can move on dry land between bodies of water. Snakeheads, for instance, if you need a new nightmare. 
but they still live primarily in water. All birds fly is both falsifiable, we can test it, and false as ostriches and emus, for example, don't fly. There will never be a purple cloud is not falsifiable, we can't test the future. All mammals have hair is also not falsifiable, since that, by definition, is true. A mammal is an animal with hair or fur. That's not an argument or a hypothesis, it's just a definition. So, moving out of the realm of science, we head to philosophy to examine Agrippa's trilemma. The assertion is that there are three types of arguments to prove some piece of knowledge, and the trilemma is picking which one, even knowing all three are inadequate as proof. The three types of proof are circular arguments, regressive arguments, and axiomatic arguments. Formally, they're called, respectively, coherentism, infinitism, and foundationalism. A circular argument is something like A is true because of B, B is true because of A. There's no external facts outside of those presented to prove your assertion. For example, Wellington is in New Zealand, therefore, Wellington is in New Zealand. Another example is 1. The Bible affirms everything in it is true. 2. Everything in the Bible is true. 3. Therefore, everything in the Bible is true. You're using the belief that the Bible is true to claim that the Bible is true without presenting any facts. Believe what you like, and do so without judgment. Belief is different from provable science. If you know any three-year-olds, you're probably familiar with the regressive argument. There's a reason this is called infinitism. It just goes on and on. It goes something like this. You make an argument. You have to prove that's true with another argument. And then you have to prove that argument is true with another argument. Back to our hypothetical three-year-old. Don't touch the stove. Why? The stove is hot. Why? Because electricity heated the coils. Why? Because I turned the stove on. Why? So that I could cook dinner. Why? So that we don't get trichinosis. Why? Because we wouldn't want to get sick. Why? I'm going to throw you out the damn window if you ask why one more time. Why? (laughs) Defenestrates a child from the first floor window, voluntarily commits to psych ward to get a good night's rest. Yeah, you're probably familiar with that one, huh? Infinite regression arguments often end with because I said so or (laughs) fuck you. The axiomatic argument, the third one, is a little more difficult. Scientifically, we'd accept it, but philosophically, it's not that easy. The argument goes something like this. Such and such is true. Why? Because it is. Just look at it. An example might be the commutative property in arithmetic. Remember that one? Of course you don't, because you probably learned it in fifth grade, filled your head with a bunch of garbage. It reads, A plus B equals B plus A. Doesn't hold for subtraction unless A equals B. Substitute 5 for A and 3 for B, we get 5 plus 3 equals 3 plus 5. Meanwhile, 5 minus 3 does not equal 3 minus 5. So the argument structure would look something like this. Addition is commutative. Why? Here are 400 million cases where it works. That's not an answer. From the standpoint of better humanhood, here are some things I want to point out. One is, if your belief, be it political, religious, whatever else, is not falsifiable, understand that it's just that, a belief. We can argue our different positions all day long, toss in stats and facts, we still have no scientific basis for our beliefs. Another is, facts are facts, other things are not. You can't claim a moral truth because morals aren't backed by anything other than belief. Finally, tell the truth where you can. Where you can't, back up your beliefs on as solid a foundation as you can. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Remember, you can get links to everything we talked about over at betterhumanhood.com. If you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher or SoundCloud or any of those podcast apps rather than just online, I would appreciate it if you'd leave me a rating and review. That'll help other people find the show. I see that more people have been finding the show lately, so I appreciate all you who are sharing it out. Kettleandfire.com. Use code BETTERHUMANHOOD at checkout for 10% off. Be who you are. Be who you will to be. We will see you next time. Thank you for listening. 
Get show notes and more at BetterHumanhood.com. Leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to podcasts. And have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you.